Hello everyone. Welcome to the OT Help Desk YouTube video series. I am Big J. I'm Little J. And we are here to talk about ultrasound. Now, this gets a little complicated, all right? So I'm gonna preface this whole conversation by saying to everyone who's listening, you need to become competent in the use of this physical agent modality. It's dangerous, okay? So we need to understand the basics because that's what NBCOT and ACO require from us when it comes to being prepared for both the boards, but in the clinic. So step back for a second in the clinic, okay? You will be instructed by a clinician and have to go through a policy at that clinic enabled for you to be able to use ultrasound. Okay, now in different states, the rules are different. So we need to preface this stuff by saying, you need to know what the state requires you to do. Joseph, do you know what the state requires you to do in North Carolina? You have to demonstrate service competency. Right, but in the state down in Florida, for example, or Pennsylvania, you're required to go through, I think it's uh, 200 and some hours, where you have to train using it before you can be considered competent. Wow. So the states are all different. So I leave that to everyone to make sure that they're, they're understanding of that because we really need to talk about the things that you need to understand. Okay. And there's really two main elements, okay. To, uh, to ultrasound that we need to understand for us. And one is the difference between continuous, okay. And pulsed, but let's back up for a second. And let me quiz Joseph, Joseph, Talk to me a little bit about the indications for what we would use ultrasound for. Sure. Um, so it depends on whether you're using the continuous or the pulse. Um, for the continuous ultrasound, it's kind of similar to what you would do for thermotherapy. Um, you would use it if you have a joint contracture, um, if you have a muscle spasm. Um, you could use it for, like we said, spasticity. If you're using the pulsed and the non-continuous ultrasound, you could use that for wound healing because um, it'll actually increase the, the phagocytes that come to an area. Um, it'll help with the creation of fibroblasts. Um, so that's more for the wound healing side of things where you're using the um, non-continuous pulsed ultrasound. So having used this for a long time at this point, when it comes to chronic inflammatory conditions, it's going to depend on the clinician and it's going to depend on what you're doing. I've used pulsed or I've used continuous, depending upon what I'm looking for. If I'm looking to generate heat in an area, okay, that's what I, I'll use continuous, okay? If I'm looking to generate um, an increased permeability in the tissue, okay, I'll use a pulsed and I'll talk about that. So we, the duty cycle, is is the first thing we talk about and a duty cycle what that means is and you'll see the difference is whether it's continuous or whether it's pulsed in pulsed you will see it referred to as 10 20 or um, in many cases 50 percent what that means is is the energy the pulse okay comes from the waveform the waveform will be on for 20 percent of the time as it relates to the 100% of the time. So if you're doing, you know, uh, you know, uh, five minutes, okay, then it's only gonna be on for 20% of the time. So it'll go on and off in terms of the pulsing. Now, when you get to continuous, it is what it says, and that is it's 100% of the time. Now, the parameters for this are different, okay? When you're talking pulsed, okay, the parameters are going to be 0.1, to 0.2, okay, squared or centimeters squared, okay, versus when you're looking for a thermal effect, it's going to be 1.0 to 2.0, known as W slash CM squared, okay, and usually that's about, okay, um, five to eight minutes, okay, but what is, okay, CM squared? So W stands for watts, okay? And that's the acoustic power, okay, of the applicator, okay, that you're looking at. Then there is another term called the ERA, which is known as the effective radiated area of the transducer head, okay? Now that one, 
breaks down then into W slash CM2. Okay, and what you get is the average intensity, okay, to the tissue that you want to work with. So for a thermal effect, okay, all right, you will again use 1.0 to 2.0 W slash CM squared, again, five to eight minutes, okay? Now, the thing that I want to remind everybody is the sound head, transducer head, okay, does not, does not get hot. It's not supposed to, and it does not produce heat coming from it. We are using this in a conversion mode, okay? And conversion means this, heat accumulates, okay, in the underlying tissue, okay, by the conversion of kinetic energy. So kinetic energy from the waves forms or produces the heat, okay, which again is absorbed by the sound wave, okay, when used in a continuous mode or in a high intensity. So we are going to use a one in terms of uh, the transducer head. We also have a three. Now we're going to do Joseph's wrist, okay? I, uh, we do have older, this is an older machine, but some of the other machines will allow you to switch back and forth. This one, you have to use a certain type head. So we're gonna use this on his carpal tunnel. Now the key <coughs> is going to be, okay, making sure, okay, turn your hand over, Joseph, making sure that we create what we call a coupling effect, okay? We do that by using a gel, okay? Sure. And I am a bad guy. I use a lot of gel and I don't care, okay? Because I know the head and the gel are what's going to produce the effect to the tissue. So we're gonna begin, and I put the head on here, and then what I'm going to do is, how much time? Well, I'm going to use at this point about eight minutes. So I'll set it for eight minutes. I'm then going to set it for, this is, so this is continuous, Joseph. So what should I be setting it for? So probably one to two for the intensity. And where I'm at right now, I'm going to set it with about a one, okay? Because I'm close, the tissue isn't as deep, okay? So that's kind of how I'm gonna set it for where I wanna go, because I wanna get the tunnel and, and kind of move from there. So once I get the, the power set, okay, I will then hit go and I will then move the sound head. So while we're going here, should we talk about some of the contraindications? Yeah, sure. Okay. Let me illustrate this for one second. Sure. You want to move the sound head, not fast. That's not going to do it. Okay. You need to move the sound head in a circular direction and you need to move it kind of slow. You don't want to go fast where it's not going to penetrate to the areas that you want to, you know, uh, effectively um, gain that heat, which remember, we're trying to get heat to the down, the inside of the tissue. So yeah, Joseph, talk about some contraindications here. Sure, so um, kind of similar to the heat, because this is, um, when you're using it in a continuous mode, it is a heating modality. Um, you don't want to use it over an area that has poor circulation. Um, again, you definitely don't want to use it over a cancerous tumor or over a deep vein thrombosis, Absolutely. because it could cause it to dislodge. Um, you don't want to use it on a fracture site that's not healed yet. That's definitely a big contraindication here in ultrasound. Right. What I'll do a lot of times is, is we'll have like a fracture of the hand and we'll wait until the doctor tells us that it's gone through that callus process. When it's calloused and the bone is healed, that's when we're allowed to begin ultrasound. Now that's what we're used to doing in the clinic, please. Okay, the books may say something different. You always follow the books for the test, but for what we're talking about right here, what we're talking about at this point, okay, is we're using this in an area that doesn't have a fracture, that is, is actually inflamed, okay, and we're using this to deep heat to the tissue, okay, which in turn, okay, will help reduce inflammation. And um, another contraindication that you wanna think about is if someone's pregnant, um, you can still use the ultrasound, but you just don't want to use it over certain areas, right? Right. So you just want to use it over their belly area, um, over the lumbar area. Is that correct? Yes. You never go near. Well, first of all, I don't know any occupational therapist that would be doing that, right? It's good to know the contraindications. I'm going to stop this because I never really turned it on anyway. Okay. But ultimately, 
I, we, we need to remember this. This is about the only area that I've ever used it on is the upper extremity. I may have gone to the traps and I may have gone to the, in between the shoulder blades, but I've never gone close to the spine. I stay away, okay? And I don't use it on any other part of the human body. That's just what I've been used to using it for. So in the clinic, because that's what we're doing this for, in the clinic, I would say that you're gonna use it in this area right in here the most for an OT. You may get into the shoulder because we should know shoulders, okay? But at, at the end of the day, okay, those are about the only areas that I would ever use ultrasound on. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that I'm never, ever going near um, a woman's belly. You know, I just wouldn't be. Now, PTs, yeah, they might be going on the back or they might be using it for something different, but they're gonna have to know their contraindications there as well, right? Um, so what else, what other contraindications, Joseph, that we might wanna discuss? Um, if you have like, let's say you've had a fracture and you have the metal pins, um, you yep. definitely never wanna put it over exposed metal because especially in the continuous mode, because that'll cause it to heat up. Exactly. Now, let me illustrate something here because I've never used ultrasound and not done something immediately following. So let's say I am working on, okay, the carpal tunnel. When I'm heating between here, okay, I'm looking for that effect. So now I have it. So now what I wanna do, okay, is I literally want to work on stretching that tissue, okay? So I will work to stretch the tunnel, okay, as part of that. And once I've stretched it because I've heated it and I've stretched it and I'm really looking for that analgesic effect, okay? And sometimes when you do this, they're in pain prior to it and all of a sudden their pain goes away. Well, I wanna get the benefit of using my physical agent modality. Because remember why I use the physical agent modality. I'm an occupational therapist, right? I'm using it for preparatory. So the most important part about this is this. I use, I use the ultrasound. I use like heat, okay? And then immediately following, I look for the benefits of that, which is tissue extensibility, okay? I like my tissue to be loose. I like my tissue to allow me to stretch it without causing an increased amount of pain to that tissue. And then what I do is, is I look for, with my client, I look to do a therapeutic activity and I like to evolve it to an occupation. So I connect every element of what we do here. And that's what our field does as occupational therapists. Welcome to the world of ultrasound, a conversion therapy, okay, um, that we can use, but we really have to know how to use it and what we're doing with it. We've, we, we have covered a, a lot of ground in this area. I want to just note that, um, you know, it, at the OT help desk, we have thousands of questions, okay? And in our product, okay, what you get is, is videos, okay, that will offer the question and then there will be a rationale that will be at answered, you know, immediately following you answering the question. So along with a lot of foundational concepts, but a little bit more in detail, well, actually a lot more in detail, you know, to provide you with the necessary information so you can clinically reason we appreciate you coming. We're also going to mention that, you know, if you hit the subscribe button so, and the like button too. Oh, you hit the like. Say you like me, not him. All right. But, but anyway, at the end of the day, we're really happy to be here and, uh, and look for us because uh, we're going to be doing these, you know, every week and we'll have information that will support you uh, on your journey, okay, to the NBCOT board certification. All right. Take care, everybody. See you later.